so there's, so there's no such thing as chance elements there are chance elements here chance elements there here and there which is the interesting point that I liked before the tape began um, and you're asking me about community uh, replying that uh, the correspondence network is logically a global um, situation involving the possibility of people any everywhere and anywhere there was a very interesting can I be heard all right? I guess I can on this. I imagine so, yeah. You don't want to play it back just to make sure? Sure, you want to play it back just to make sure? Okay. Said, we are having program difficulties. And they play some recorded music, and they play the recorded music again. We are having program difficulties. Finally, they played the sound, but they had no image. They decided to just, you know, something happened. And they, When did you start writing letters? About when? I, um, as a form, as a vehicle. The North Carolina catalog had um, postcards from Arthur Secunda from the 1940s. So the, uh, the correspondence school had its beginnings in the 1940s and its uh, sort of self-conscious activities in the um, 50s and very self-conscious in the 60s and of course now in the 70s that it, uh, it's blossoming it's it okay. has been um, we were discussing last night um, there are many people who say oh I've been doing correspondent art for years and many people have they have you know, written letters and sent things in the in the mail of a visual or poetic nature, and uh, I mean everybody has done this. But uh, the art critics, in describing my activity, Dory Ashton, uh, for instance, v very many years back, uh, have uh, stated that I have so obsessively done this for so many years every day as an activity that I've sort of uh, achieved seniority in the action and uh, I, I love it. I love it because I um, have, uh, you know, demonically pursued the subject. I have um, distributed and written thousands and thousands of uh, letters to, uh, with no, um, you know, there's no logic for their, for in, in the reasoning. There's, there's an incredible uh, loss and, and waste when I mentioned distribution and seeding and planting before. It is a, nat a natural kind of phenomenon in that uh, you know, of all the leaves on a tree, uh, very few of them actually, or fish in the sea uh, as a germination. Um, th things um, flourish, grow, wilt, die. Uh, a correspondence will reassert itself. Each person is a, you know, different, uh, has a different reason to communicate. And Black Mountain seems like it's becoming the myth equal to Paris of 1905, 14 period. It's talk about community. Goodman has, has a, a um, pretty good has an interest. A well, he has a great interest in the um, Creeley. Olson um, years, which were at a time that I was not there. I was there earlier during the Albers uh, Cage Eric Satie festival times. And um, 
There was a kind of distant, slow disintegration that took place at Black Mountain in the um, management and administration. And in the, I don't know if it's in Fielding Dawson's book or in the Duberman book, but um, maybe it was in Fielding Dawson who wrote about the sitting around freezing to death because no one was tending the furnaces and uh, how cold they were and there was nothing to eat and you know that sort of. So it's it was more it was the but it was a you know it was the um, sort of time of the you know beat generation. Mm -hmm. it, it was very in keeping with the time. Whereas uh, I when I was there, it was like um, the. Albert Bauhaus, Germanic uh, expression. I mean, I can't imagine Walter Gropius being there with Charles Olson. They would, they just, it was a very different mm -hmm. setup. Uh, we were so, uh, idealistic and, and attempting to be so constructive. It was, you know, after the war, and, uh, you know, we were so involved with uh, carpentry, um, building. Uh, I spent a great deal of time there doing house plastering. I plastered a seven-room farmhouse. I mean, I, part my, my education suddenly consisted of my working with a, uh, a hillbilly house plasterer and slaking lime and doing corners and with a trowel and ceilings and building windows and um, putting roofs on a, on a farmhouse, uh, which was I, what I wanted to do at that, at that time. It was, uh, I mean, I learned, I learned a great deal from, from doing, doing that. By, by mentioning floor rolling, um, I think uh, I'm referring to a, an experience that I had in southern Illinois. I forget what city it was in, Springfield, possibly. And um, I was offered at 11 o'clock one evening, a complete television studio to do a half hour um, tape of anything I wanted to present. And um, I was very excited because there were cameras and cameramen and sets and lights and uh, dials. And I had never been in such a place before. It was. Uh, this was at the university? No, it was a commercial, uh, commercial television yeah. studio. And I um, immediately, since I had been asked to do something, um, began a performance, uh, the point of which uh, was that it was not uh, st static as we now are being seated. They, uh, they thought that I you know, wanted to sit and talk and present, and they set up the camera and the background and so forth. But what I was doing uh, was actions in the outer edges, and I began uh, moving every, physically moving everything, uh, which is like a recurring theme of my lectures, which is to uh, set everything in motion. The you know, furniture was lifted and carried, the drapes were closed and opened, and um, the cameraman then uh, cut on that he should follow the action, and um, so then began a, a sort of dance of the camera following me. And one of the people who was there was an actor who, um, by chance, spontaneously decided that he wanted to perform with me, which was unplanned. So what happened uh, was a rather passive action on his part. He uh, 
appeared and I began arranging, piling up furniture on him and doing various arrangements. There was nothing uh, verbal in our exchange. And the uh, people back in the control rooms were doing very flashy things with those spiral dissolves and fade-ins and fade-outs and all the um, flashy technical things mm -hmm. that they, you know, sort of just one. Uh, yes, and they, um, but the interesting thing about the experience was that I never, I never saw the result. They were going to send me a tape which never appeared. It was viewed that evening. Uh, people saw it. I never saw it. And it uh, just sort of like went off into the void in some marvelous fashion, which was, you know, quite all right with me. I don't use them visually. I use them uh, as uh, verbal. Is it? verbal information. I was explaining my oldest rubber stamp reading Collage by Ray Johnson as to how and where and why I use and stamp it, which in the collage uh, process or ceremony, um, after I apply tape or gl glue to a surface which uh, technically makes it a collage, I then stamp it rather than signing my name, although I might sign my name after stamping it. But the stamping is rather like the stamping of an envelope. It's a um, final, when a letter is licked and st stamped before it is canceled, it is then dropped into a box and it's a whole process involving the post office department. I oh, rubber cement oh in my, when I was in China the other night, of all things, in my dream, I, and I had this experience because I worked in the uh, Orientalia bookstore for, in New York and uh, did book cataloging, packing, and uh, I had to, I was instructed on how to repair a Chinese book, which years later appeared in my dream. The page had a slight tear, and I was about to mend it with some kind of tape when someone instructed me to look in the margin. And it seems that in the binding of Chinese books, there's a whole uh, way of uh, stitching and binding, which is different from the European tradition. But to my amazement, the way to repair, and it was illogical, the, the, the tear on the page, there was a perforation and a kind of tab and then the spine and the page, it was contradictory because to repair it, the whole thing had to be removed, but there was no way to put it back. So as a symbol, that was a very interesting uh, occurrence in, in a dream because it was um, completely illogical as an instructive process because the um, the repair created a destruction so maybe it should not have been repaired although it was that was the uh, intention in, in the dream <laughs>